I'll come to you if you can't do it. Right. Okay, I want to get you into the mindset of what it is like to be a graffiti artist. I don't need to take the pen. Right. <laughs> Whatever you're feeling, you might be your name, you might want to draw a picture, whatever you want, just express yourself. You've all got to do it, so yeah, go, go as big as you want. Okay. Um, bearing in mind, you've got five tags to do. Okay, okay. so ready, just steady. Tag no, no, like you've got to get as far, but, but go big, go big, go nice and big. Right, ready, well, steady. Not all, eh? No, not for no fill at all. Okay. No, gonna, right, come quick, these are coming. Come on, get a move on, that's it, come on, come on, that's it, good, right, pass it to the next person, thank you very much, you can sit down. Right, okay, come on, right, watch out, please, over there, you've got to check out your shoulder, right, that's it, quick, keep going, come on, come on, pass it, I've seen them, they're coming, right, anyone else, right, come on, yeah, come on, there's those official people in the room, come on, come on, move it, right, right, go on, you next, go on, good, good, right, come on. Yeah, keep that. Come on. Go fast, go, go, go. Right, next one. Right, somebody else. Right. Hey, nice one. Professional. Right. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. You've done this before. Right. Okay. okay. Always put the lid back on your pen. <laughs> There's lots of health and safety regulations as well. Don't put it in your pocket. Right, what do we see? Scribble. You said it. <laughs> right, what, 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 what do we see here? What can you see? What does this represent? What's identities. Identities? Not been given much time to do it. Right, okay. Do you think you could develop your style if you had more time? If you didn't, if you weren't looking over your shoulder, you could sit there two, three hours. Yeah. I can get a bit creative, use different different size pens. Where are they on the uh, on our wall here? Where are, where are the tags? In the middle. In the middle. The light surface. Oh, they're on the light bit. Okay, who put the black bits on? The council, didn't they? <laughs> okay. Do you see any <coughs> tags on the black? No. No. What does that say to you? What does what 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 are the what are the tags actually respecting there? Colour of the pen is. It's the colour of the pen, yeah, but it's a, it's about boundaries, isn't it? It's about framing. It's about composition. Now, unconsciously, you've all adhered to composition, and this is what taggers do as well. If there's a good spot on the wall that's easy to tag, they will do that. They won't. People naturally respect boundaries. If there's an easy bit to paint, they paint it. So, yeah, it's about boundaries. Where are your boundaries? Do you have boundaries? If you paint the whole wall black, what happens? You get white they get white paint. <laughs> yeah? It's a no-win situation. So, make it easy in certain places. Think about what your boundaries are. Where are your boundaries? Do you have boundaries? What is your where, where, what's your where, where do you have jurisdiction over? And where is it your right to assert boundaries? Can you assert boundaries over other people's property if it's in your jurisdiction? If a shop owner commissions a piece of art <coughs> on their shutter, and then, as quite often happens, the council comes along and. It's the council's job to keep everybody happy. And that's not an easy task. I don't envy that responsibility. But I do think that what, is, what everybody wants is changing. And councils are getting their knickers in a twist. They're preserving Banksy's and then sending people like Tenfoot, who's currently serving two years, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, so maybe you've, uh, you've met it, Mr. Tenfer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, perhaps you know him by a different name. Yeah, well, I mean, this is the thing. About, it's, it's about boundaries and about respect from both sides. It's about 
graffiti artists respecting what people want to see, and also about councils and other governing bodies respecting what the people within their area want to see as well. Um, if you don't have boundaries, then you can't work with your boundaries. I'd like to show you a little bit. Oh, the reason I'm wearing sunglasses <laughs> is um, I'm not, I, I can't afford anonymity like some famous graffiti artists. <laughs> I, um, I lived. I. Uh, I lived in a, I've been living in a hostel um, until recently. I started out, I was homeless when I first came to the city. I didn't have support network because I was, I was a sex worker. I was begging, I was living rough. I was sometimes squatting, sometimes dossing. Um, I was eating out of rubbish bins and pretty screwed up and one of the things that I found in rubbish bins was paint and there was a kind of this very dark period of my life when lots of uh, lots of creativity came out in a very abstract way and I just used the paint that I found in the street and I started I started painting. I was living in a very dirty part of town and um, it wasn't until years later that I actually found my work being uh, represented. I've got, um, I think that was that was quite a dark period, and that was something that came out of that period. And um, that's a book that's just came out last year, but it, it, it's starting to be. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, you can. Um, but this is the journey that the street art has taken me on, and certain areas of lenience, Hackney Wick, where I was living, I was dossing in a, a, a derelict church building there right next to a cemetery, really weird place, but um, I had that leniency of being able to live there and then the leniency of being able to express myself. I'm very, uh, I'm loath to say grateful because I think it's kind of a right to express ourselves, but the East London has been quite hip and down with it. Um, also, not quite in our area. Glastonbury. Not the centre of street art, is it? I went there um, I went there earlier in the much earlier in the year, in the spring, um, and I did a big mural on the on the side of a building, kind of got the nod from somebody that, yeah, okay, you can do it. Didn't really you know, it's not full permission. I don't know really if they owned the wall, but somebody said, like, Yeah, you can do it. <laughs> I asked the dog who was walking by, do you mind if I paint this wall and uh, <laughs> Brilliance of new street art. The new street art that has appeared on the high street of Glastonbury is brilliant. What precisely painted characters to watch over us and to give them a yellow background coincides with the Martha Care yellow day. <laughs> <laughs> what a shame that somebody chose to deface these innocent figures with a big hairy appendage. <laughs> but it didn't say that. Um, actually, I'll. Uh, th this, after, after the big hairy cock was drawn in, the council couldn't um, have that really. So it was out of my area of jurisdiction. I go, and, I, I go on a twice weekly tour of all my pieces in East London, because it's where I live. Twice a week I go around and take out all the tags, all the willies, all the boobies, all the funny speech bubbles that have been put on my art, um, most of which I've asked permission for. To, to use the wall, um, and after about a month of bi-weekly tidying, people stop tagging, you know, you're like, oh, it sticks kind of on one bit, you know. So yeah, I do, I'm kind of OCD about my work. <laughs> um, but yeah, Glastonbury was out of my area, so it was a couple of weeks before I could get there, and by that time the council had cleaned it off. Um, a lot of requests online, and I got a lot of emails from people, and um, the local press were interested. Who, who is this? Who did this thing? It was brilliant. We really liked it, and now it's gone. So we went there at six o'clock in the morning, and we did it. And then, da, sticks thing is back. It's a bit difficult to read from there, actually. So, um, 
Yeah, these much loved, but oh, I'm not even going to try and read it, but basically they're saying, yeah, thanks and we love it and thank you for giving it back to us. And the story doesn't end there. I was up there for two days staying with a friend. We went six o'clock on Sunday morning. You can actually see the vicar who parked his bicycle is actually going into the church there. Um, while I was still in Glastonbury, we just checked online, you know, when you look, you Google yourself, <laughs> and somebody posted, oh no, they've been defaced again. Somebody drawn another willy on it. So we went back to the town centre, but there was nothing on it. And we asked around, and apparently somebody from the town was such a supporter of my work. They had gone and they have got some yellow paint and they painted out the willy that had been drawn on it. So this piece has been adopted by Glastonbury. I think that was probably the most advanced reception of street art I have encountered. And, you know, I live in one of the supposed epicenters of street art. Um, yeah. Yeah, Glastonbury. Um... Which leaves us with um, reservations, places where we are allowed to paint. Okay, this is part of a this is part of a, an exhibition we had in Mile End Art Pavilion. Uh, the manager of the park, Michael Rowan, um, wears a suit, very official and very well connected, and. Uh, was very cautious about us putting on the event, but after the event actually said the, the unwanted graffiti in the area actually went down during the period that the show was on. It was on for a whole month. We opened up the Mile End Art Pavilion. Um, we had very well-known street artists, international street artists. Um, we've got got a run here, we've got um, some very naughty boys as well who paint trains, um, we've got local kids coming in who'd never used a spray can before, we've got Grems who's a very famous uh, street artist, just um, also doing a lot of things with, uh, I think he made a swatch watch and yeah, doing a few sort of more corporate things which I've also got to touch on as well, because the corporate aspect of it is a big thing. And you know what? If the councils don't get on board, the corporations will. And all the really evil ones as well are using child slave labour in the Far East. And isn't it weird how all the companies who are using child slave labour in the East want to get down with the kids over here? <clears throat> yeah, that's a kind of bugbear of mine. That's something that I really want to watch out for. Um, where are we? Yeah, who's using these? Who's using these spaces? These are your, uh, what you perhaps call your uh, problem kids. <laughs> these are people who are from uh, problematic backgrounds, uh, unprivileged areas. Uh, people have got a lot of problems. I know most of them. <laughs> I've been one of them, and I'm probably still one of them. Um, this is an outlet. This is a solution. This is something really, really positive. There's always a problem with these problem people. There's constant councils and, uh, and, and, and governments are always trying to invent new games and trying to occupy the minds of these young kids, these young scallywags who are going out and stealing mopeds and doing this. You know what? They're already doing it. They have got the solution here. They're going out and they're painting, well, they're not allowed to do it anywhere. So if you say you're not allowed to do that here, so I'm not allowed to do it anywhere, so what does it matter? But if you do have areas, reservations, then at least you can say over there, and like we demonstrated with our boundaries here, if you do reassert your boundaries, they do work. It just takes 
assertion, a stripe at each end of the wall, if you go over that stripe, keep going over it, then people will notice that it's, in the same way that people notice when they go over my work, it will stay there two, three days maximum. I spend more time cleaning graffiti off my graffiti than I do making graffiti. I spend more time cleaning graffiti than I do making graffiti, in fact. Um, I've actually become. Oh, I didn't put it on the chip. I've actually become the poster boy for the uh, the local. Oh, here we go. This is the this is the um, graffiti removal people. They've actually used me as their logo. <laughs> Rainbow friends of yours. <laughs> Rainbow removal. Um. What else? Right. Also run school projects, um, <coughs> adventure playgrounds. This is about um, having a boundary and having a place, a reservation, where people can express themselves. Start me on. Um, also got... This is slightly older group. This is Camden Community College. We've got Camden Council over there, haven't we? This is Camden Community College. As you can see, I give them a very uh, structured framework. Yeah, I see this as a collaboration. I try not to be condescending to the artists that I'm working with. They're still artists. They're young people. All these kids. I go in and I'm like, they're like, oh, you're, you're stick. Yeah, I've seen you in the magazine. Or I've seen you on the telly. And I'm like... What's, what's your tag? And they've all got tags. They've all got tags. And they're like, oh, well, my name's Snot, or my name's Boink. Or, and I'm like, oh, yeah, I've seen you on the phone box or the bus stop. <laughs> Here, what? Here's a wall and ten spray cans. Like, go on, knock yourself out. Um, that's a really rewarding thing. And I see it as a collaboration. Um, that's a really exciting thing for me. Um, to be collaborating with young artists, and these are these are artists, and they may be starting out in this kind of tagging, rudimentary, hurried kind of thing. But if you give people room to grow as artists, they will grow. The little tags, when people are going to do a big, they call it dub, big bubble letters. There's a word for you. Uh, the, the dubs are a natural progression of tags. It's the same people. It might be two, three, four, twenty years later they actually make that progression. If your borough has got lots of tags and no like proper big pieces, it's a sign that you're not allowing your artists to grow. Uh, I've been allowed to grow. I live in a what's patronisingly called a deprived area, which is actually all the area that was being held back for the Olympics. So we had a kind of golden era. Um, I don't know if I use visual prompts or written prompts. Um, I've got a lot to say. Um, spread of graffiti. Do not sanitise or regulate it. Busking used to be really exciting. You never knew what you were going to get. Busking on the underground in London, you would get all sorts of weird and crazy sounds, and it was a window of opportunity for people to take a step into the music world. They might get heard by somebody. Peter Gabriel, Peter Gabriel might be walking past. Some record company might be walking past, and you you could get picked up. That's the kind of dream. Or for people who are unable to make that step of signing a contract or going on a course, unqualified people, people who didn't fit into the mould, couldn't step onto the first rung of the ladder because it's not there for them, because they're outside the system. That was a place where people could come and make that first step on their venture. In the same way that street art 
has allowed me to get involved with serious projects, but I've worked with uh, uh, the National Health Service. I drew a lot of stick, I, I did some graffiti uh, figures of people on different drugs, on heroin and on crack and on dope and... And that's on the NHS uh, drug rehab website now. I did a, a cycle safety, the two things campaign for British waterways. Had 30 foot of wall up there. That's given me the opportunity to do that. I've got uh, my first solo, my first big solo show in West London in the spring, and that's come from my grassroots stepping up to them. If you don't allow people to make that first step, if you remove that first step, the way that the going back to what I was saying about the busking. The busking was regulated. They gave you a little sphere, a little, little semicircle, and you had to pass an audition to play on the underground. That takes away the bottom rung. If you're able to attend an audition and look smart enough and say the right things, fill out some forms, uh, have a national insurance number, have all the blur, then you're kind of there already, you're past that first step. If you sanitise the graffiti scene, if you try to regulate it, if you say, right, I mean, I think there are some amazing projects where walls are given to artists, given, not, not sold, um, to artists. There, there's space for that too. And there's going to be, there are going to be things with walls being the value of walls as advertising space. We see advertising space creeping into street art space, which is horrible. We see corporate adverts being pasted up over really high-end graffiti with no knowledge of graffiti, just using that as a medium to sell products. We're seeing corporate graffiti, big companies. Um, Western Union did some reverse graffiti things. There are people actually encroaching. As a street artist, I want to progress this space for street artists. Corporate ventures sneaking in and taking that wind from our sales is a big thing that's going to happen. It's already happening. I'm saying watch out for that. If you're going to create enclaves for street art to flourish and for people to progress themselves, take it to the next level, get into the art world, there are going to be a lot of people piggybacking on that. And a lot of them are going to be big evil companies, and that won't be working in your favour. So watch out for that. Um, for a, We've got two more after you. So yeah, yeah, okay. Um, yeah, it bottoms up. That's the kind of way I'm looking at it. Uh, yeah, this is your target demographic. It's there. Take the opportunity. They're presenting it to you. Give them space. Um, and. Yeah, prison is no sort of solution. Uh, yeah, give people space to develop. Um, thanks for joining us.